All right, guys, long time no see. Uh, back with a bit of a November update, and I will try to summarize the three things that I've learned this year. So, whatever, stick with me. So let's take a look here and see what I did done learn this year. I learned that the Salanova lettuce, especially the green varieties, can really, really, really deal with cold. I'm extremely impressed. This has never ever been covered. That was covered for a little while and obviously it blew off in the last windstorm. So, you know, I know that that might be, you know, even a little bit Whatever, it's not unbelievable. It's not n not necessarily what I would call market quality, but with a row cover over top and then a single little poly hoop, that's that is fantastic for the second of November in my neck of the woods. Are you kidding me? That is something. That's fantastic. The uh, the Swiss chard. You know, I know it's a it's a cold hardy, but it it isn't it isn't that much. Like, I mean, you can see compared to the kale, right? So, I mean, the, this, this winter boar kale is just, listen. Oh, it is so good. It is so good. This uh, dinosaur kale, not impressed. Not impressed. I will, I will not be growing that again up here. I know it's, uh, I know it's a beautiful kale and some people absolutely love it, but uh, it got decimated. Uh, by the little green worms whereas these barely got touched the winter boar so those are still doing good got tons left to dehydrate so these first rows were all brassicas at the start of the year um, I started those very very early and uh, even though my first planting of them died <laughs> due to a couple of, of, of very late frosts Almost in June, it was it was late May when it frosted. It was just before William came out here to visit me, so I had to replant. But I had enough in the greenhouse. I had, I'd started like twice as many, so that was uh, extremely fortunate. So I learned that uh, whatever I'd like to plant out in the field, I need to, I need to have a significant amount extra, just in case something goes wrong. So that was uh, that was fortunate. I my brassicas did very very well this year, and. You know, whatever. If I can find a couple of pictures and pop them in here, then I will. But they did really, really well growing-wise. Now, at the market, that was kind of another story. It's not so much that they didn't sell. They sold. I usually sold what I brought. But when you think of a 40-foot row, that row was only bringing me in, like, maybe... 100 or 150 bucks for basically the season it just you know i tried to set this up with the mindset of a of a community shared agriculture a csa program like a veggie box so you buy in for the year and you get you get a share of whatever's harvested this week right and uh i, I wanted variety 
and I grew it like I grew, you know, on the uh, community allotment out here, and how I used to grow in my garden, and just like a bit of this and a bit of that, like most of us do, to be perfectly honest. Like, I, tr I tried to do this in a way like most allotments. I mean, I had squash, I had brassicas, I had root, I had greens, I had, you know, tomatoes and cukes, and I, I just tried to spread it out. Now, having said that, not every crop is as valuable. So if a person's growing for their family, then it doesn't matter how valuable it is, right? You just, you grow it. When I'm looking at my square footage here that I have available to me and what, how can I maximize that? I think I'm going to be dropping some, some of these crops because they just, I'll, I'll grow some of them for my family because I know that we love them, right? And it's things that we can blanch and freeze and vacuum bag and puree and, you know, we, we can keep them going. But I think, I think my brassicas, like this area, basically here, so there's like six rows, four, five, six, there was not a huge return off of that. The kale that was in there did really well, the broccoli did well, and I was super surprised, that's another thing I learned this year, is that the broccoli really, you get a lot of extra cuts off of that, a, like a lot three at least with little broccolettes the little flowerettes that come out you know and i i like i have nothing against those things i mean you get a big huge nice first head of broccoli okay that's great but for smaller families i mean you know you can have broccoli with a meal as a side dish once a week maybe that's a lot of broccoli right the little small flowerettes i can bag up in you know half pound one pound bags I, I, I don't know. I just I think they're I think they're great. Um, I did some late seeding. Oh, actually, well, whatever. I'm up to my kind of three herb rows uh, that I did. I have been so disgusted with the quality of herbs in the grocery store that I was like, ah, oh, it's a slam dunk. This is a slam dunk. I'm gonna be the herb dude. Are you kidding me? Like, and they grew well. They grew well. If you followed along, like these rows were. Man, I, it's just that, yeah, they didn't, they didn't sell all that well. So I think I need to do a little better marketing on that uh, to get a better return on it. I don't want to kick herbs to the curb <laughs> um, quite yet. But at the end of the day, like these three rows, I, they less, way less than a hundred bucks each. I mean, they just didn't, they just didn't bring in much. This was spinach at the start, and it and it sold fantastically. Hey, there's <laughs> I got a couple of rogue spinaches. Still, you know, whatever. And you could okay, so like right there, you can you can tell like these things do not. Mine's a cold, and it has been cold. It's like yeah, you know, like I, I watch. Oh, obviously, I watch a lot of other YouTubers that garden and grow. And, you know, oh, you know, we got a frost and I'm not trying to, you know, poo-poo your experience, you know, with, uh, um, you know, Father Winter. Um, but, you know, a frost that comes and then, you know, by 10 o'clock the next morning is gone. That is, that's not, that's not what I deal with in Zone 3B, like, at all. When I say, oh, yeah, we had a cold snap come in, I, like, minus 10 Celsius, a couple of nights in a row... Oh, that does a number on things. I planted um, second sowing, and I put in uh, I put in beets where this where the spinach was, and they almost, and I mean almost. Well, I guess there's some that are you know okay. I mean they're still that's edible, but they're just they're small. They're they're very 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 small. So I don't know if that's worth the effort or if that's just all going to be compost. I will have to pull these all out because I want this bed ready for some manure when I get some manure. Uh, I also planted some baby fingers carrots. This was after, oh, uh, what was in this bed? Arugula. Uh, <laughs> this was the weird bed that had like arugula and maybe some beans in it and perhaps some radish. And uh, these actually, I think, did, did very, very well. Now, they are babies. They're like, and I mean like, oops, baby carrots. But... Oh, do I need to get a fork? Fork me. Like, just perfect pickling size. They are so nice and so... Oh, man, they're crisp. These things are going to be delish. Anyway, these are getting harvested today. 
they're all coming out uh, because we have we got more minus tens coming up. So, uh, what else? What else did I learn? Uh, I learned that I, I need to get on top of my stuff, so I put 500 garlic in this bed. They've been in now for, oh goodness, they've probably been in for five or almost six weeks. So that's that's a huge positive. The last of my original carrots, those are all going to get harvested and stored up for the winter. I did try a little uh, a hoop house-ish type thing, but I lost my attitude uh, later in the year for a couple of reasons. And uh, I didn't, uh, I didn't come out. So, but again, if you take a look at this, the ones that have fared the best tend to be the uh, the green ones. So, if I was to do a late season sowing again next year, I would focus. I would, I would keep some of the because they send them to you in like four different little bottles. These green ones, those green ones, these purple ones, these purple. I would keep some of the green off to the side for my late sowings. Uh, I put some kohlrabi in uh, because it is Nebraska. It should be able to deal with the cold. It hasn't. Uh, it doesn't look terrible. Uh, and just by the looks of things, I needed to get them in maybe three or three weeks earlier. They're just starting to bulb up. So um, again, l a learning lesson. No, it's no big deal. I've, I've never really I'm trying to even think if I've eaten a kohlrabi. I'm sure I love them. But anyway, the point is, I just I wanted to see uh, my Brussels. There's a couple in there that are going to be okay, you know, I think. So anyway, these are something that I think that I can leave uh, just for a little bit before I, I yank them out because I do have other stuff that's got to come out before this minus 10 rolls in. Uh, I've got a few of the smaller leaks that I did not take to market, although I will say those did sell uh, very well. I seldom ever came back with leaks from the market, but again, you know, when I look at the amount of money that can be made off of a 40-foot row, I would have rather had spinach in there, or another row of greens, or another row of beets. It, it just... So again, a, a big, a big learning experience. This other side over here, it's been a while since I've given you guys a bit of an update, but I've uh, I, I harvested everything that I could and sold uh, the patty pans and the yellow straight necks. Those are fantastic. I will definitely do those again. I was so close with my late season brassicas. If I had netted the first batch that I put in so that the green caterpillar bastards wouldn't have got at them, I think that I could have got some cabbage. Um, I, I just, I, I'm next to pause. So I mean, timing wise, I think I know if I was gonna do successional sowing of that next year, what would work. I've harvested a bunch of potatoes. I'll put out some uh, spud videos, but this is the manure, the compost, or what have you that was in the buckets of potatoes. So basically I'm going to get manure and then redo all these rows, add to the top of them, tilt it in, fork it in, rake it in, whatever you want. And, and I still have four rows that I need to kind of, whatever, go over, get some gloves on and get this crap out of here and, and get ready to go. It's going to be a long October update, but you know, it's funny that... So, just looking at what I've shown you already, one of the questions that I had in my head at the beginning of the year is, can I grow on this scale? Like, I've always, always been a pretty good gardener. I mean, not the best, you know, I don't know every secret, I don't know everything, but... I certainly don't mind researching it. I don't mind watching other vids on it. I don't mind putting the effort in. And there's been, there's been a whole lot of crops that, you know, that that I haven't been able to grow. So, but this type of a scale scared me. It's, it did really did. You know, like I wanted to do it. I was excited, but at the same time, it's like holy crap, right? Like, are you, you gonna be able to pull this off? Are you gonna be able to grow? And. Like I said earlier, I, I set this up with a CSA, a veg box program in mind, pre-sold to families. I didn't do any pre-selling and the reason for that was I didn't have the confidence that I could grow enough to put in boxes for everybody. So the number one thing I think that I learned this year is that I can, I can do it. I can, I can do this. I can. I did. Did you see? I totally did. I grew, I grew far more stuff than I sold. And that's on me. I mean, I just didn't put, I, 
I didn't have the confidence that I was going to be able to deliver. So therefore, I didn't want to be pre-selling a whole bunch of stuff. You know, call me crazy for having a conscience, but I mean, I'm not, I'm not here to rip anybody off. I want people to have good produce, but at the same time, I want to know that I can grow it. So I learned that I can do this. The second thing that I learned, thought for a fair bit about this, you know, from the three wonderful people that nominated me, uh, Idaho Gardener Girl. I think she's in uh, Minnesota somewhere. Just kidding. She's in Idaho. <laughs> And uh, she she nominated me on this little tag. The three things that I learned: uh, Greta's Greta's garden out in Newfoundland. Love me some Greta. She's uh, she's rocking it out there. She nominated me. And uh, the first person to nominate me was uh, was ACS, the slideshow master. So uh, thank you, you three ladies. I have thought quite a bit about it, and I don't get around to tags very often if I do them. Um, so please, no offense uh, intended. But um, I had a lot of obstacles this year. You know, whether it was just, uh, I mean, there was so much to do. Getting the greenhouses set up and, and getting compost in and getting that spread out. And I don't have a flame weeder. So the weeding side of it this year, I won, by the way. I flipping won. I won. The weeds did not win this year. They won last year. I'll give them that. We're 1-1. One, one. We are 1-1. One, one. We're tied. They didn't win this year, but that meant a, a lot of hand weeding. And I mean, a lot. Every single one of these rows, I have gone over by hand numerous times. Yes, I used a hoe where I could. Stuff starts growing in, and especially when you're doing intensive planting, the market gardening, it's, it's an extension of square foot gardening is all it is. It's just 40 feet of it. So instead of one square foot in your garden, I'm doing 30 inches by 45 feet. It's the same thing. It's but like let me tell you, when stuff starts growing in, you're not getting a hole in between there. And I was not going to lose to the weeds again. So there was so much time spent on things that I didn't have time <laughs> to get set up properly infrastructure-wise. I spent so much time washing. And thank you to my wife Gail. She definitely did a lot of washing and bagging for me uh, as the year progressed because I just I couldn't. I couldn't keep up. I could I could not keep up with it. I, I'm trying to do like a small commercial scale on a just, you know, a meal for four type of equipment at home. Spinning my lettuce in like a salad spinner in your kitchen. You know, it, it was just, it was obnoxious. There was so much time that I spent irrigating because I didn't, I didn't get all my irrigation finished up. You know, the tomato greenhouse. The tomato greenhouse right here. This thing, it was awesome, but it was like the bane of my existence. It needed to get watered, hand watered. So, I mean, I drag a hose down, gravity feed from the big tank, but you're still standing here, moving the hose around. Oh, oh. so much time was spent on things that in the future, once, once an infrastructure is set up and in place, just would oh my stars I, I'd have more time to do more important things to me but I had a, I had a bunch of challenges and you know I mean the markets didn't go as well as I had wanted them to as well as I thought that maybe they would you know maybe my expectations were a little bit high I, I still sold a lot of stuff and I still talked to an awful lot of people and built a lot of relationships and I I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change it for the world. I'm glad that I went and got this year under my belt. You know, having said that, it, it, you know, I want to make more money. So I, I got, I got to figure it out. I got to change a few things. But so the first thing that I learned is that I can do this, and then the second thing that I learned through all the obstacles and sort of the uphill and the doing everything by hand and not having the right infrastructure in place and spending the amount of time on simple things that, you know, like. Folks that market garden that have all the right tools and have all the stuff and things like they just don't spend that kind of time. So, but I learned that even after going through all that, I learned that I want to do this. So I learned that I can do this, and I learned that even though it didn't go the way I wanted it to, and not every crop was a success, and and you know my greenhouses didn't make anywhere near as much money as I was hoping they were gonna, blah blah blah. I learned I want to do this. 
Like, I really want to do this because I, I know that I can only get better. And I think I had an okay year, but I can get better. So the third thing that I learned this year is that this is um, coming up on my, my last year at, at this property. I got told, oh, I don't know, maybe a month or six weeks ago that, uh, you know, that was it. You know, next year's the last year by, you know, next August, September, I got to have all my stuff out of here. So I haven't made a lot of vids since then. <laughs> Had a few things on my mind, if you will. So for the, uh, for the few friends that have been, you know, kind of asking, it's been a bummer. But at the end of the day, there's uh, at the end of the day, there's positives. I do have an attitude of gratitude. I would not have had this opportunity without uh, the generosity of my father-in-law. You know, to allow me to have a, a weedy hill that was never ever used and uh, transform it into this. I know that I can do it. So starting from scratch, tearing all this down. Tearing down my greenhouses and moving them to somewhere else that I don't know where yet. I know I can do it, you know. Just very, 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 very frustrated that I that I have to do it. I was so excited about the fact that like some of this is done, right? Now if I just do a little bit more, okay, now that's done and off the list. And I all I have to focus on is keeping the beds weed free and getting my transplants ready for the next round and just growing and selling and like, so, yeah, I don't know. It was a kick in, uh, a kick in the knit with a frozen muckluck. Um, I knew I wasn't going to be here forever. I was well aware of that. Honestly, I was. You know, and I know I had one buddy that's like, man, you're putting a lot of time and effort into somebody else's property. What if something goes wrong? Like, well, what do you want me to do? Not get this year's experience? And even last year's experience with the losing to the weeds and the greenhouses getting caved in and like it's better to loved and lost than not to never have loved at all or what have you it was better for me to get this experience i've never built greenhouses before now i have you know what i mean i've never i've never i've never made i've never made a, a bunch of rows before i've never used cedar before there's so many things that I have had the opportunity to get at least a little bit comfortable with. So I do have an attitude of gratitude, although, I mean, I can't lie. Like, my attitude has taken a, uh, a major hit in the last little bit. I'll get over it. I'll rub some dirt on it and walk it off. It takes me a while. It takes me longer now than it used to. But, uh, so yeah, I'm not, uh, I don't know. I don't know where I'm going to go. So I'm going to have to find some... Uh, very, very, very affordable land that I have a little bit of security that I'm going to be able to stay because I don't want to do this all over again to be moving in 18 months or 24 months. You know, I'd like to have something where I can, uh, you know, get set up and, and, and just just do my thing. So anyway, those are the three things I learned. I learned that I can do this. I learned that I actually want to do this despite the obstacles. And I learned that I'm going to have to do this all over again if I really do want to do this. So Thanks tons for the tag. If uh, if you guys didn't see my new shirt, I got this from Danny, Cajun Hydroponics. Thank you kindly, man. I very, very much appreciate it. And uh, it will be worn with pride, my brother. Thank you uh, for those of you that, you know, have chose to click on and watch this. Um, I do appreciate that as well. And, uh, you know, whatever. If you share this, if you like it, give it a thumbs up, give it a thumbs down, whatever you... Uh, Whatever you'd like to do, I do appreciate uh, those of you that have stuck with me. I haven't put anything out in, uh, in quite a while, and now you know why. So, anyway, thank you kindly, and until the next one, I got some harvesting to do. We'll see you later. The next topic is unlikely things to hear on a gardening program. People ask me, why do you grow vegetables? And the answer is, I don't know. It's much cheaper in Tesco's, and I could have had a life. <laughs>